I have this bad habit and let me know if you do this too because I am sure I'm not the only one who is guilty of this where I'll be scrolling my way through social media and I'll come across a handy and or interesting crochet hack and I'll think to myself oh I really need to try that and then I proceed to never ever try that. Well today I put an end to my crochet procrastination because I'm going to try eight different crochet hacks from TikTok and give them either a thumbs up or a thumbs down. A yay or a nay. A yes or a yeet. Or to translate into Australian, a yeah na or a nah yeah. As I pull up the first video on my laptop here, I want to ask you guys a favour. See, I have a couple of hack videos that didn't quite make the cut today. I only chose eight because I didn't want this video to drag out too long which means potentially there will be a crochet hacks the sequel the favor i have to ask is if you happen to see any crochet hacks out in the wild please send them my way i need a few more to add to the bunch that i abandoned on the cutting room floor it doesn't have to technically be a hack i'm playing fast and loose with the definition here today mostly i'm looking for things that are either useful interesting or just you know straight up really cool to try I think I've got everything that I need and I think my setup is good to go. So we're going to jump on into the first hack and these are in no particular order at all. So let's see what the first one is. Double it, triple it. Okay, well that, that could be very useful. So I'm going to go back to the start of the tutorial. So I need some scrap yarn, which I have, and then I'm going to need a bigger hook than what I've got here. This'll do, six millimeter. So we doubled it, and then we tripled it. Just letting you guys know, I forgot to hit record on the second camera for two of the hacks. So I'm having to re-record me attempting those ones. So if the audio from the like the face cam and the motions of the second cam don't quite sync up, that is why. I'm telling you, the brain worms have been out in force today. And then I think it was this end here that we made the slip knot in. Okay, so it's the opposite end from the working yarn. So we're going to make our slip knot here. This feels weird <laughs> making a slip knot with so much what am i doing what i just forgot how to make a slip knot <sighs> what am... why am i struggling to make a slip knot it's probably because i haven't slept in two nights <laughs> when something has been a a word I won't say because YouTube. <laughs> okay, I finally have my slip knot. Next step was to just crochet, I think. All right, so I'm gonna crochet until I reach the loop at the end here. Probably one more. Okay, there's my loop. And then I passed the working yarn through that, I think. Play. Okay, so we're going to pass that through, go up, and then pull, pull. Oh, and we have three more strands. Okay, this is really cool. And then you just keep crocheting. I'm going to crochet until I get to the loop again. And then pass the yarn through and pull it. Oh, I like this. I like this. This already gets a thumbs up. <laughs> okay. So that is hack number one, turning regular yarn into chunky yarn. And that gets the skein spider a thumbs up.
What I forgot to mention at the start was for all of these hacks, I will be putting the name of the creator down in the description. So I'll put the name of the video and then I'll put the name of the creator. So if you like what you see, you can hop over to their TikTok and follow, like, you know what to do on the social medias. I would say hack number one was successful. So now we're going to try hack number two. And I don't remember what order I put these in. So this is going to be as much of a surprise to me as it is to you guys. So number two is, oh, well, that's interesting. This is one of those ones that's not technically a hack. This was just something I found really interesting. So it's a border and it looks like you're single crocheting, but before you do the second yarn over pull through, you spin the hook around. Okay, nothing else? No, that's it, okay. So what I do have is some scrap pieces with me as well. This is the tank top from, I thought he was here. Yep, there he is, from my stitches pattern, which if all goes well, should be out next week. So I'm just going to use this to attempt this hack. And I'm going to grab just a contrasting color of yarn. And I don't need six millimeter hook for that. I might use, Four point five will do. So I'm going to go into these these stitches here. I'll line that up, and then I'll join it with a slip stitch. And then it looked like she went into the stitch, yarned over, and pulled through. Then spun a hook around, and then finished the single crochet. Okay, that pulls the loop fairly tight. Spinning it seems to pull the loop fairly tight against my hook, so I might have to loosen up my tension a little bit. I'm going to the next one. Then I'm going to yarn over, pull through, do a little spinny spin, spin, and then finish the stitch. Again, that's really, really tight. Again, in, spin first, and then finish. That does look pretty cool so far, but I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. I might, I'll try a couple more stitches and then I'll watch the video again. So spin and I'm still having trouble with that first loop being very tight on the hook. So maybe I need to loosen my tension when I spin. How does one do that? Okay, gentle spin, gentle spin, gentle spin. No, it's still same issue. Okay, so I'm going to watch that again, just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Is she chaining? No, there's no chain. I think I'm doing it right. Yeah, I think I'm doing it right. I just, maybe I need more practice. So let's just do this for a little bit and see if I can improve my technique. That was better. So what did I do there? I sort of pulled up a little bit first, pulled up a little bit, then spun and pulled through. Okay, that makes it easier. So I go in, yarn over, pull through, and then I'm going to pull up the loops a little bit, then spin, and then finish the single crochet. That's it. I got it now. So pull up, spin, finish. Pull up, spin, bugger that one up. That's okay. In, spin, pull up. No, pull up first, then spin. And <laughs> finish okay you know what that does look really cool I think that would make a nice border for a blanket or even finishing a top or something like that once you get the technique down thumbs up hack number two or I don't know if I'd call that one a hack maybe interesting crochet technique number two was a success now we're going to do number three, and number three is... I showed you guys um, probably the most helpful tip I had shared on my old account. 
Um, so if you're crocheting in the round and you need to do the giant chain first and then join it, before you start working around, say for instance you're making a KO or an infinity scarf or something like that, um, this tip is for you. So I've just chained 15. Um, any more than 15 gets a bit tricky because it's, the yarn doesn't want to stay straight when you hold like this. So usually I'll do 10 there. Pop your hook out, so lift that up a little bit, pop your hook out. out. Get your chain, go back to the very first one, then in the back, so turn him over, in the back, pop your hook through there. Back. Make sure you've got him straight again, and so it all lines up straight. Pop your hook back into the loop you just took it out of, then continue to chain. Um, so, Ooh. and then once you have the... If that works, that will be incredibly useful. Okay, grab my yarn. Let's use it all this time, and I'll do, ah, now I'll use the 4.5 millimeter hook because it's bigger, you can probably see it a little bit better. So we needed to chain, I think he said to chain 10, or he likes to chain 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then it was to take out my hook insert my hook in through the back of the first chain i think i might need to watch this again and then yep i'll have to watch that last bit again Wait. so we're going to make sure the chain doesn't twist and then pop it back on the hook is that pop your correct hook back into the loop you just took it out of then continue to chain. And then continue um, to chain. So. so pull it tight. Ooh. Ooh. I like this. This could be a, a game changer when it comes to crocheting clothes. And I have to make a chain that's like 150 long. And it takes me 10 minutes to get it not to twist so I can join the ends. But this, this method... And I'm guessing when you finish, you just, and a slip stitch. Nice. You know what? This one gets two thumbs up. That's how much I like this one. Two thumbs up. Hack three, also a success. Let's go on to hack number four. So hack number four is going to be a color change hack or tutorial. And I think I've got a couple of color change ones in there too. I can't quite remember, but I think there's two. And the reason I'm trying this is because I know how to change color, but I've never found a good way to do the, the jogless chaining color so that your stripes are even when you're working in the round. I've tried several you know, of the tutorials and techniques that are out there, but none have really worked out well for me. So hopefully this one's the winner. Before I can begin that though, I just need to crochet myself a little piece in the round. So I'll do that first. It's not been a good day today. Uh, you would think I never made a magic circle or a slip knot before. I completely lost count. This is why I use stitch markers. Okay. One and then my final increase. And that's all I'm going to do because I don't think I really need a big piece to try this out. But I'm going to grab a second color yarn. You know what? I'll just bring the pink back in. And now we're going to watch video number four. Learn how to make this perfect invisible color change. I Keep hope watching. it's a perfect invisible color When you're color ready change. to change color, finish your last stitch of the round. Cut the yarn, leaving a small yarn tail. Okay, you know, we'll do this one step by step. So pull up, cut my yarn, pull it out. Oh, no, wrong way, wrong way, hang on. So we're skipping one stitch, and then we're going from the inside out next the yarn tail and pull it out okay take the yarn tail 
and pull it out. Do this with your hook or your fingers, either works. Next one. And then go back into the last stitch that you made. Insert your hook in the back loop only of that stitch from the end. Okay, back loop only. So we're going inside, but under the back loop only. And then out and pull the yarn tail out again. And then we're going to pull the yarn tail out. Isn't this just the invisible finish? I think I do this with my needle. I should have just used my needle. I know how to do that. Okay, what's the next step though? Now you've created that fake stitch here. Yep. Now using our new color, we're going to work a standing single crochet stitch. So you're going to start by making a slip knot with that new color. Okay, so make a slip knot with a new color. Hopefully, I don't have as much trouble making a slip knot as I did before. Make a slip knot. You're then going to insert your crochet hook in that fake stitch that we've just created. Okay, into the fake stitch that we created, which is this one. And then and we're going to work our single crochet stitch. Then follow the pattern as written. All right, so just continue crocheting as normal. So I'll just do single crochets all the way around here. And then when I get back to the start, we'll see how well this color change works. So I've done the 18 stitches that I need to, and I'm going to work back into the first one. And one, I will put a stitch marker in, so I remember that's the first stitch of the round. And to me, like it's not, it's not bad. Can you tell where the join is? I will give it this. I think it's the the closest one to like a perfect color change that I've tried so far. You can still see a little bit of the jogging, but that might be because my yarn is a bit loose perhaps. But all in all, I think that looks pretty neat. So I will also give this one a thumbs up. Okay, hack five. I'll show you what to do when you reach the end of the round. Oh, no, not hack five. Apparently there was more of hack four that I just completely skipped over. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, I think. So I'm going to take out that last stitch I did. And then there's apparently a way that you finish off. The first stitch or the standing single crochet stitch that we made. And we're going to keep following the pattern as written. When you're ready to make another color change, just No, it's literally things. what I did. I can see the future. I'm psychic. I already knew what we were going to do. Now it's time for hack five. Hack five was the other color change one that I was talking about, but this one is not changing color at the end of your round to start a new round. This is changing color during your round. So I think that's why I've got the two different color change ones. So let's press play on hack five. Okay, I'm just gonna continue using this piece, but I might bring in the blue. Just a heads up, this is the second piece that I had to re-record the footage for. So once again, if the video and the audio doesn't quite sync up, that is why. Two, three, four, five, and number six. And then, oh, finish it. I'm not used to finishing the stitch with a color change because I usually yarn over, pull through, and then I'll finish the stitch with my new color. But in this one, we finish the single crochet, then pull up with your hook, and we're going to insert our hook into, I think these are the front posts, aren't they? I don't do, don't use front posts like single crochet or back post single crochet very often, but I think this is the front post. So I'm going to insert my hook into there, and then what do I do? Bring in the new color, yarn over and pull through those. Okay, I'll use the blue. Okay, so bring this in, line it up, yarn over and pull through. And then just continue crocheting. 
I can't really see if this person is working over these ends. Let me go back a little bit and check because I don't know if that makes a difference to the hack or not. Did she just pull that straight out? Hang on, hold up. Let's go back a bit, back further. I think she did. She just like pulled this out. There's the end. Yeah. All right, let's see if it works. And I think I did something wrong. Yeah, that did not work. And I'm going to go back to the start of the video. It's okay, pull up with my hook, insert into the front posts, or what I think are the front posts, bring in the color. Okay, see, I can't see if she's working over the ends or not. So this time I'm going to try that. And then, she just like pulls this out. It's not working. Wow, I managed to screw up my secondary record in a whole different way than I screwed up the first one. I mean, it's technically progress. I'm gonna give this one more go. Uh, I don't know what I can do differently, but I'm gonna give it one more go. Four, I'm gonna pull up. No, I need to finish first. So finish, pull up, insert my hook through the front posts pick up the new color and at this point she just pulls on this yarn oh i'm doing the re-record and i can't get this one to work even with a second attempt and i tried a few different things too and i thought for a second there that i had it but no it's just that my fibers got caught up and it's just tangled oh, i'm done with that one i'm done now it's still coming undone okay that was hack five. I'm going to give that one a thumbs down. Now I give it a thumbs down because I couldn't make it work. That could be down to my incompetence. It doesn't necessarily mean this tutorial is a bad one. If you end up, you know, investigating these yourself, if you try this one, let me know if you get it to work and how you managed to do that. For now, we will go on and try hack number six. And hack number six is an alternate chaining method. Okay. That looks so weird to me. And it looks like whoever's done this tutorial has held the hook in between the bend of their knee. I don't think you're going to be able to pick up on this one if I try and use this camera. So I don't think I can even get my leg high enough. Oh. I already don't like this. That <laughs> stuff my leg there. Oh, all right, I'm gonna make a slip knot. I'm gonna put that on my hook. And then what did they do? Maybe you have to start with a couple of chains because it didn't show the start. It just showed them making the chain and they already had chains to begin with. So I don't know if you actually have to start off. So looks like working yarn, chain, working yarn, chain, working yarn, chain, working yarn, chain. I don't think I'm getting anywhere. I've got to watch it again. That just takes it off my hook. Then pull it on. Nope. Wrap it, wrap it, wrap it, and then pull. Okay. Ugh, this, is, this is not comfortable. All right. Wrap it, pull, wrap it. <sighs> you know what? Thumbs down. Oh, that is so hard on my back and that anyway. I give this a thumbs down because if you're someone who deals with chronic pain, this is not good for you. Don't, don't use your leg to try and make chains. Apart from that, I just, I don't think it's practical. I'm not going to sit there with my leg up every time I need to make a crochet chain. It's just not happening. So hack six gets a thumb down from me. It might work for some people, but I am not one of those people. Hack seven is again, not a hack. It's just something interesting that I found. So when you reach the stitch you want to thrum, you just need to insert the hook through the stitch. Thrum. I don't know what and that is. And then instead of grabbing your normal yarn, take your piece of yarn that you want to thrum. So I've got a piece of roving and put it on your hook and pull it through the stitch. 
And then now you can go back to your normal yarn. So take your yarn and wrap it around the hook and then you can pull it through both the thrum and the stitch. Okay, well that looks cool. I don't know what a thrum is. Um, let's see. Probably going to have to go back to the tank top here. And it looks like she's using thicker weight yarns to do this thrum thing. I don't know if I've got any here. So I might just, I don't know, double up on one. Actually, we'll quad, quadruple it to make it extra, extra thick weight yarn. Eight ply times four. What's that? 32 ply. Okay. I'm going to join my blue yarn again because I'll start crocheting in that. And then I will crochet in my thrum piece. So let's just do a couple of single crochets here. And then we did the first part. I think, hang on. Oh, let's watch it again. So when you reach the stitch you want to thrum, you just need to insert the hook through the stitch. And then instead of grabbing your normal yarn, into the next stitch and then bring in this piece that you want to thrum. I have to look up that word, I don't know what that is. From context I'm guessing it's this. Might have made this too short, let me make this a little bit bigger. Maybe we'll just do three. All right, so I'm going to pull that through and then I think I finish in my original color, but I'll just double check. Roving and put it on your hook and pull it through the stitch. And then now you can go back to your normal yarn. So take your yarn and wrap it around the hook and then you can pull it through both the thrum okay, and the so stitch. Okay, so do finish, pause, do finish with the normal color yarn. Okay, and then continue crocheting in that. No, with the red, I just want the blue, thank you. All right, and I can see how this would look pretty cool if you used a thick, uh, thicker yarn. Like she said, she used roving there. If you used a chunky yarn, maybe even something like the, the one, I never remember what it's called. It's like, it's a chunky parfait, premier, premier parf... <laughs> It's something like that. I can never remember the name of this specific yarn, but it's a chunkier yarn. All right, let's add another thrum. I'm just going to pick this back up. No, I need to finish. And then I go in and I, no, you get out of the way. Then I pick this up. All three, not just one. Pull it through. And then I finish in my original color. I think I pulled that too tight. Okay, I like that. Thumbs up. This could be used, I think, to make like a jumper, just to add some interesting details to it. Maybe it would be a good scrap yarn project. I might add that to the list of my ideas. Scrap yarn jumper. Okay, but that is hack number, what are we on? Is that seven? Yes, hack number seven. One to go. Final one uh, is making a cord. So it looks like I need two colors. And God, I've made a mess of things here, haven't I? Give me a sec. <sighs> Why does center pools never work for me? In the entire time I've been crocheting, center pool has only ever worked once. I'm gonna have yarn everywhere. I found it. Okay, finally. I don't want to get too ahead of myself again, so I'm going to watch this video first. Okay, back to the start. So it looks like I need four strands, two of each color. And then I'm going to make a slip knot with those.
and then I think I hold the yarn and hold one color of yarn in my hand and okay now hang on we start with a no, we start with a chain with both colors I think no that was her slip knot that's actually her slip knot so separate the colors and then you chain with no you wrap this one around your hook, I think, and then pull through. I think I might have wrapped it too tight. Then pull through, then repeat. Yep. Okay, so we are wrapping and then pulling through all four loops. Get it in frame. In frame there wrap pull through wrap pull. oh that's cool i like that i don't know what i would use it for but i like it <laughs> maybe if you wanted to make a strap for I don't know, a bag, a purse or something. You'd obviously use a thicker weight yarn, but maybe that could work. Bracelet. I don't know. Do you guys have any idea? What would you do with it? But that looks really neat. I like that. I wonder if you could do this with multiple colors. So if you've wrapped around to it. Let, you know what? Let's try it. Give it a go. I'm going to bring in my pink. Line that up with the yellow. So I'm going to go over with the yellow, over with the pink, and pull through six loops this time. Ooh, is it working? Over with the yellow, over with the pink, pull through. It's working. I am a crochet genius. <laughs> That's true, someone seriously altered the definition of genius. And then pink, and then pull through. Okay, so theoretically, you could expand this out to many, many more colors. You know what, let's try that too. Why not? This will be the last one, I promise. I'm kind of fascinated by this now. It's so simple, but it's so interesting. Line it up, remember my order. Yellow, pink, and now, and now red. And then I'm going to yarn over, pull through all eight. And I picked up a red one. Try that again. Nope. Red, what are you doing, mate? What are you doing? Maybe you can't do infinite colours. Try it again. I want to get this fourth colour, I'm determined. Yellow. Pink. Blue. No, that is red. I know what my colors are. There we go. Yellow. Pink. Red. And then pulling through with blue. Nice. My tension's a bit all over the place now, but it's working. Then yellow. Pink. Red. And, oh, I've messed up here. <laughs> Don't know what I did there. Let's try it. One more. One more. Yellow. Pink. And... <sighs> Red. And then we're going to pull through with the blue, hopefully. And that worked. Okay. It's gotten progressively messier as I've added more colours, but it works. So I like hack number eight thumbs up for that one as well and those are all the hacks that i have for you guys today let me know what you thought of them will you be using any i know there's a few in there that i definitely will be i'm especially attached to the idea of making a scrap sweater with that thrum thing that was really cool and i like my my strap at the end here i don't know what i will do with that 
but that was just fun to play around with. As I mentioned at the start, if you come across any hack videos, interesting crochet videos, technique videos that you would like to see me attempt or you think I should attempt, send them my way because I would like to do a second video in this what may become a series because this was a lot of fun and I like learning new things that I can incorporate into future projects. So thank you for watching this video. Like it if you enjoyed it. You know, dislike it if you didn't. <laughs> Consider subscribing if you haven't already and I will see you guys next week with a new video.